we've got a couple of Ask the Pastor questions I want to wrap up. Uh, next week I want to get into, back to a family affair. Um, we started with Ask the Pastor last week. I didn't quite finish with the second one. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the new one and then I'm going to go back to the, the one from last week. Uh, essentially, the, the, there's a background to this story. Okay? The person that wrote this question uh, had a family member, uh, a professing Christian, that was supposed to um, sell some things on their behalf. And over the course of time, uh, this relative was saying that nothing had sold, there was no money. Uh, come to find out through a third party uh, that this guy was telling everybody else that everything had been sold. Uh, essentially, uh, this relative was in sin, either lying to one or lying to the other. And the, the question is, essentially, does this, is this sin forgiven? Will God hold this person to account? <clears throat> One of the things that Jesus did that really got under the skin, skin of the Pharisees was when they would ask him a question, what would he do? Answer. He'd answer with a question. So I'm going to turn this question around and I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want this to sound um, like I'm making light of the issue by any means. But my question is, which of your sins are you comfortable with God not forgiving? Which ones are you okay with Him holding against you? See, the, the root of our faith is that Christ's sacrifice was sufficient. That there is nothing that can be added to it. There is nothing needed to be added to it. His grace is sufficient. Now, we know that uh, everybody will be under a judgment of one type or another. Uh, the first judgment is whether or not your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? If your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you move over to this side. And, no, I'm not going to say this side because that makes it sound like you guys. <laughs> you move to a, a segregated area apart. Uh, and, and then those whose name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, they move to a different part. Now, everybody will be judged according to their works. For the believer, it's unto rewards. Okay? You're, you're going to be in heaven. The streets are made of gold. Uh, our hope is that our rewards... I don't want to have nothing to throw down at the throne. I want to have everything I possibly could get to lay out before the one who is worthy of it. Okay. So, um, those things that are sin in the life of a believer, um, those are things, those are works that burn up. They, they turn to ash. There, there are three things that I'm certain of. The first uh, is that Jesus paid the cost for all sin. Hebrews chapter 10 tells us that his grace was such that the one sacrifice was sufficient. There was no more that was needed. Second, is that those who believe are still going to sin. We're still going to stumble. We're still going to make mistakes. And sometimes we're going to willing, willingly embrace sin. Three, the third thing is that God's Spirit is alive and active in the world today. When Jesus said that he was going to send the Spirit, it was to convict, to convict to make us aware of sin and righteousness. For the believer, we've already been convicted of sin, now we're being convicted of righteousness. You ever get that thing, you're in the middle of doing something and, and you get a prompt from the Holy Spirit, yeah, don't do that? 
I do. So, assuming that this relative is a believer, because ultimately I, I don't know the person, never met him, at least as far as I know, I've never met him. Um, this sin is being accounted for right now because of the cross. That, that price has been paid. It's, it's accomplished. I believe that the Holy Spirit uh, directly and indirectly through the church, brothers and sisters in Christ, should be Now, that's for people like you that listen. For people like me that don't, it's more like, I'm not going to really do it. Um, Wouldn't hurt. That sounds like a challenge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably need it. <laughs> so, um, about that one, you know, I don't want to get into a lot of theology. We understand where our forgiveness lies, and we understand that it is, it is sufficient. Um, the only thing that I could see in this is that if this person is a believer, um, you might speak to them as a believer. And, you know, there is an order set up in Scripture for church discipline. Uh, you go and talk to them if they don't repent. You take a brother with you and talk to them if they don't <coughs> repent. You bring it up in front of the church. Uh, but the, really the, the, the thing that I see in this... Um, you know, the Corinthians were involved in lawsuits and a lot of stuff that, that just was not good. Uh, Paul says, isn't it better that you suffer loss rather than that the name of Christ be dragged through the, the courts? So um, let your peace return to you. 